Hey everybody, what up? Um, in this video, I'm gonna talk about frameworks. The other day I had a conversation with somebody that was like, um, we were talking about like the fastest frameworks out there and um, everybody's all, you know, very opinionated with like the frameworks that they use because they invest a lot of time into it. And I can understand that. Um, but actually these days in my career, I actually don't care that much. Uh, so the framework that I use for my website is Nest.js. And uh, one of the things about really any project that you use is like something like Nest.js, if I look at it on GitHub, the, um, the project is essentially created by one person, and there's only one person that really works on this thing. It's this guy right here. And the issue with these frameworks is like, Nest was sort of like, and it's not to be confused with Next, right? And Next.js is a, is a different framework from Vercel. And Nest.js though, one one contributor, right? 44,000 stars. And when I look at the actual source code, a lot of this stuff hasn't changed. You can see two, three years. And um, some of the latest updates were some just basic stuff. You know, they're updating the readme and uh, things like that. So for all intents and purposes, this website project looks rather dead. Um, and uh, that's just the way these things go. You know, it's like um, we pick these frameworks and we think that like they're gonna, they're really fast. But you know, these frameworks, you know, they sometimes fade out and fizzle real quick. So this video though is talking about, you know, what is the fastest framework? And there's really no way to judge. I mean, uh, th there's somebody that once said, I think it was a politician or something. There's like lies, damn lies, and statistics. And the same thing could be said probably for web framework speed. So when I look at something like this, um, the fastest framework is this Drogon core, which I've never even heard of. So I looked it up on GitHub and it's a C++ framework. So it's pretty awesome that it's, it's that fast. But I think the bigger issue at play here is that there's so much more than what these benchmarks are providing as far as like how fast the framework is. If you really wanted like the fastest like possible website, it seems to me like, you know, you don't even really need like any sort of server side code, like whether it's C++, Java, PHP, Python, you don't really need any sort of server side stack that's running that stuff if you really want a true, true speed. Um, you could actually just have it on like a static site, right? So we have these static site generators like Next.js that are out there that are basically creating a bunch of static files. And then it's like, oh, when you want to have like server side state and stuff like that, you can do that as well. And then you start getting into what is called um, SSR, server-side rendering, uh, isomor what is it, isomorphic JavaScript or something like that? Is it isomorphic? Yeah. Anyway, I don't remember the term. Uh, but ultimately, you end up having a web server stack that has to compile a bunch of code to then deliver what is like regular HTML that is re uh, rendered uh, by the browser. And search engines prefer that static HTML so that they can parse it. And as good as Google has gotten over the years, um, they really don't parse uh, JavaScript single page apps all that well. So, um, and even if they did, we all know about like how difficult it is to market your website and all that. Um, so let me get to the point on this. Um, these web frameworks, if we look at something like Node.js on this, like, so the other day I had this conversation where like somebody was saying like, uh, Next.js is one of the fastest frameworks out there. And that really just can't be because like when we look at Node.js on this, you know, it's ranked number 172. So that is the server side runtime that something like Next.js is using as well as Nest.js, even though Nest.js is uh, also mentioned on here. So here's Nest.js using Fastify. So with Nest.js, you can use either Fastify or you can use um, Express. So whatever one you use, you can see it's not ranked in the top here, uh, but it doesn't really matter. And like, if I look at something like Django, Django is number 359. So Python Django, it's one of my favorite frameworks because I just go back on that a long time. Um, the bigger issue I think is that none of this stuff exists in a vacuum. It's not like based on one person's machine of how they're running computations. Uh, the websites are much more dynamic than that. A lot of your bottlenecks are gonna be whatever sort of server side stack uh, that is connecting to whatever sort of database that you have, whether it's MongoDB with NoSQL, Apache. I, uh, um, why am I saying Apache? Sorry. Um, I'm saying like databases like Postgres, MySQL, MongoDB, and then other things like CassandraDB, all that stuff. A lot of your bottlenecks will be in the database itself. 
Um, some of the stuff is like actual, you know, where your server is located. So if you have a lot of customers that are in Europe and your web server is in New Jersey, there's quite a bit of latency there that, uh, or ping rate, right? The longer time that it takes to actually hit your server and transfer all that data underneath our, our oceans or through the sky and our satellites and all that. So um, <clears throat> I think ultimately it doesn't matter what web framework you use. To me, the fastest framework is the framework that you know the best, the framework that you're going to be able to get the project done. Say you did go with Drogon Core, which is the fastest, and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going for this pure speed. What happens, though, when you release your project, say it's a success, and then you want to hire some talent. Like one of the issues with having a fast framework and why we have these centralized code bases like React and Angular and Vue and everybody's using them is because everybody knows them. And it's easier for businesses that are using them to hire talent to be able to help you write whatever it is that you're trying to write. So with something like Drogon, it might be the fastest out there, but then you're dealing with C++ on the web. And a lot of C++ programmers don't deal with web-based stuff, so you have that sort of bottleneck. And then, you know, simply uh, the fact that this is a, a brand new framework that you would have to learn. So to me, it seems like the more important thing is that, and really the, the biggest important thing is that it doesn't matter what framework you have. It really doesn't. So if you're using like Django, like if I was gonna build a full stack website that I needed um, a relational database tables and users authentication like django could get you up and running out of the box really really quick same with ruby that's why they're still around they're still being used um and a lot of people know it right so you can hire talent there's a lot of support for the project itself so unlike nest.js there's way more people that are working on django as a web framework so if there is some sort of security problem you have the community helping you out trying to patch it up even when you're not working if you're using something like drogon though I would imagine there's only a handful of people that are truly working on this, but let me see. Uh, so it's gonna be this person who's primarily, so that is the primary developer. And then uh, I guess this is somebody different there. That, that looks very similar though. And Teo and Teo Ann. It's like, why is there two people? That's probably the same person. Just my uh, uh, sus uh, suspicion there. Um, anyway, so I wouldn't use a product like this because not enough people use it, number one. Uh, there's not enough contributors. And two or three, I, I'm not a C++ developer. So it would take me forever to get up and running with something like that. And where does pure speed really, really matter? Uh, a lot of the speed stuff that we're dealing with is like network latency and things when we're dealing, like if we're dealing with a streaming app or uh, database storage, uh, we use things like uh, caching to make our database queries a little bit quicker and indexing. So I think when it boils down to it, there it doesn't really matter. We could argue all day long over the fastest framework, and it's funny to nerd out on that every now and then, but I think from a business perspective on this stuff, like I couldn't care less. Um, I use the best tool for the job, and sometimes the best tool is a tool that you know how to use. 